Jolie. Oh yeah. Oh, what's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 30 of the Sailor Jerry podcast. My name is Matt Cothran. I am still your host. Sailor Jerry Spice Drum is still 92 proof. It is still made the old school way, and it is still bold and smooth as hell. Man, I've missed you guys. Feels like it's been an eternity. i am be honest with you, man. There's been a lot of stuff going on. It's been busy, busy, busy. On the West Coast, things have been popping off, man. We just had the Super Bowl. The Rams won the Super Bowl. If you're into sports or football, whatever. Uh, but there was a big, a big party on the West Coast over the weekend for sure. We had Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, and an upside down 50 cent rocking the halftime show. Man, that was incredible. Uh, you know, for someone who is uh, born and raised in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, a diehard West Coast uh, native, you know, it was really cool to see that. You know, obviously, too, you know, Black History Month and Dre and Mary J and 50 and Snoop and Kendrick all long overdue for some halftime love. They could have done the halftime show each individually and it would have rocked. But to have Dre uh, be the maestro that he is and bring them all together, uh, you know, it was special. It was really, really cool. So that was dope. You know, it was also my birthday, Super Bowl Sunday, uh, you know, February 13th. Grateful for that. Super stoked to be happy and healthy and alive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it's all good, man. So it was a it was a beautiful weekend. Uh, Valentine's Day came and went. Uh, you know, lovers gonna celebrate love, man. That's just the way it is. That's the way it's always gonna be. So I hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day. I uh, hope you got a little love in your heart. Big shout out to everybody out there rocking with us, supporting the podcast, listening to the podcast, watching the podcast, liking the podcast, subscribing to the podcast. It means the world to me. So thank you guys very much. It's time for episode 30. Paul Dobelman is a modern master of traditional tattooing. In this episode, we catch up with the Flash God himself to discuss his living legacy. From growing up as a troublemaker with an artist father and a fortune teller mother, to blazing his own path as an artist and tattooer, and launching his own motorcycle glove company, Speed California. Paul Dobelman is calm. Paul Dobelman is cool. Paul Dobelman is collected. And Paul Dobelman is really, really good at tattooing. So put your gloves on, pour yourself some Sailor Jerry, and let's go. I'm good. How you doing? I'm great, brother. I'm great. It's good to see your face, man. Nice to talk to yeah. you. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. Right on, man. What's uh what's shaking with you? Happy Friday. How's your uh how's your 2022 been so far? It's been it's been crazy, but uh it's been it's been good. There was a lot of a lot of projects and a lot of just stuff going on and uh busy is always good. I like to be busy, so it's uh it's it's been fun, but it's been yeah. a lot. You know? Yeah, man. It's it. And I appreciate the time, you know, for being on the podcast too, because I know you're a super busy guy. No, thanks for, thanks for having me. I was just thinking about, um, Brian, uh, had, uh, had me come out to one of the shows and you guys were playing that show too. 
and I was I was with Juan and my my friend Cookie and and we came to see you guys and it was a blast. Yeah, man, I that, that's that's awesome. That's really cool. I was I was thinking about Juan today because I was going to talk to you about you know Black Card obviously, and uh, I got a Black Card shirt from Juan a, a while ago, and uh, he's he's one of the the true OGs, dude. Juan Puente, he's a fucking great guy. Yeah, it's it's he is a great guy, and it's cool to have become friends with him because. It was the name that I heard in tattooing when I was first starting. And um, I started in San Diego tattooing and, you know, he worked at Avalon and it was, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was cool to hear old stories and then, and eventually, you know, meet him and become friends and get to travel with him. And uh, he's, he's great. He's such a, he's such a fun dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's down in Portland now, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's in Portland. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I've been meaning to. I it's, I've only been to Portland once, and I've been meaning to get up there. There's a. I, I have a lot of friends in Portland. Um, you know, guys at Atlas and Thunderbird and Smile and AWR, and so I definitely definitely do for a trip up there. Yeah, Portland's cool as fuck, man. There's it's always been a great spot on tour, uh, but it's always it's crazy too. I mean, they 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 were fucking occupied up there, man. They go they go. <laughs> Wild. They yeah, go off to I know. <laughs> yeah seriously it's like you know it was it's weird in san francisco but i don't think it was that weird yeah yeah what's the vibe in san francisco right now it's fine it's like uptight you know about all the all the stuff but and i feel like for such a i don't know i, I think everything's just changed in a weird way but it's uh it's still fun you know i think you know I'm surrounded by a lot of great people and um, I have a pretty good outlook on life. So I don't let like, you know, all the bullshit politics and fucking homeless and stuff like that get to me too much. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's definitely, you know, it's weird. There's more crime and there's more stuff, but it's like, it's not like, it's not like I'm unfamiliar with danger. So it's like, it's a, uh, you know, it's okay. Yeah. They call you danger Doberman. <laughs> uh, what's well, uh you grew up in san francisco right um so i grew up just north um i grew up in in marin and that's like just on the other side of the golden gate bridge but i was i was born in san francisco and my family is from the sunset and well, i got a lot of cousins out here so i've been here most of my life i moved to san diego when i was 20 and then i moved back about 14 years ago oh okay nice how old are you uh 41 hell yeah oh yeah i'm 42 i'll be 43 in a couple in a couple days here so oh, shit. uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy early birthday oh i appreciate it my man I, you, I appreciate so, it so <laughs> thank you i appreciate it man so uh you know growing up in the bay area we'll just say that you know as a kid you know going to school and stuff like that what were you like as a kid you know what were you what was like junior high paul all about um junior high paul was i was i was a nice kid uh but i got into a lot of trouble uh i had a lot of respect for my parents but and so i wasn't a dick but uh i was easily influenced and i had in seventh grade i had a bunch of older eighth grade friends that were older girls and they were the kind of girls that would date like 16 and 19 year old dudes. And so I had access to whatever, you know, a 16 or 19 year old dude could get their hands on <laughs> at the age of 12, you know, and then, and then old high school was like a lot of, I mean, I started skateboarding in middle school too. So high school was definitely continued that. And I was, I loved it. I was, I mean, I had a dreams to be, pro but i wasn't good enough to be pro you know like i i could you know i'd huck myself downstairs or gaps or things like that and i just i loved it you know but um and i'm at older when i got older i'd skate transition and stuff but uh but yeah in high school it was a lot of street skating and just a lot of good times with friends punk rock you know we like all that all that good stuff how did you get into punk i don't know i think there were shows in petaluma at um i'm spacing on the name of the venue right now but uh we'd go up there sometimes and there'd be there'd be shows and 
I had older friends a lot of my yeah. life. And so they were into the Ramones and the Stooges and stuff like that. And then, you know, then it came like, you know, Vans Warped Tour kind of stuff was happening. And I'd, I'd go to that and see, see shows and have a good time. And I loved it. You know, it all kind of went hand in hand. Skateboarding and punk definitely go hand in hand. Yeah, for sure. Did you get into any of the uh, like the 90s fat records, San Francisco kind of scene stuff? Or did you steer clear of that? I liked uh, No Effects when I was a kid, you know, and uh, I like I liked Rancid. I didn't really have a lot of like albums. I didn't like couldn't really like afford a whole lot like when I was, you know, so I like I just kind of what what I could get my hands on, you know, yeah. and I was uh, that was I, I definitely was more into like uh, Dead Boys and Ramones and stuff like that. And so as I go old, but yeah, we, we, we saw, you know, shows at Canes in San Diego a lot. And I saw, I think no effects there. I think I saw Rancid there. And I had a friend that owned a party bus or I have a friend that he, at the time he had a party bus company and now it's become more of a transportation company, but uh, he would take us to the warp tour every year and we'd take a party bus there. And it was, it was awesome. Yeah. Living the dream in San Diego in my early twenties. Yeah, man, that's a good place to live the dream. Canes was a, I, I don't know, I don't think Canes is around anymore, but it was, uh, it was a hilarious venue. We played there with Rocket from the Crypt early on in Bronx okay. days, like 2000, probably like 2003 or four. Um, and it was one of our like early shows. And I just remember that place had like kind of legendary meathead security. Like you would definitely get, you know, bounced around in that place if you, if, if, if you, if you were looking for it uh yeah we it's, definitely got kicked out of there before <laughs> yeah like, yeah 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 it's it's like that but we kind of like that you know if we got kicked out then there was a story <laughs> yeah getting kicked out sometimes is worth it you know it's it's definitely worth it what was uh uh what were your parents like you had kind of an interesting uh upbringing right your dad was an artist yeah so my dad he painted cars and motorcycles um when i was in when I was kind of like the end of my high school years, I would help him out. And um, when he was, he had a shop in San Francisco. He did a lot of custom airbrushing and, and, and motorcycle paint work. And it was all different though. You know, it's like his, his kind of passion was the art stuff, you know, but we also, you know, during the nineties, a lot of people had Ducatis and there was a big, you know, it was not tech. It was like dot com days. And so a lot of people didn't want to have a scratch on their Ducati. And so like <laughs> they get a tiny little scratch and we'd sand it down and repaint it for 500 bucks. And it was it was good money. And but the but the passion part of it was, yeah, he, he loved doing airbrushing. And so he did this really cool Frank Frazetta death dealer on this Harley tank. And it's one of my favorite paint jobs I've ever seen. And so that was really inspiring to be around. He's uh, he always would push you know he'd, art supplies he'd bring home for me all kinds of stuff like that so it was it was great to have someone that was artistic around and and you know willing to kind of push me in the right direction with it Hell and yeah. my my mom she she had all different kinds of jobs and stuff like that but she um you know one of the things I kind of a lot of the tattoo imagery that I do is a lot of you know kind of mysterious women and whether it's like, you know, gypsy or whatnot, you know, now you can't say gypsy, I guess, or whatever, you know, because it's like a, you know, if they, whatever, whatever that is, you know, if I don't, trying to, trying to be, uh, I guess, more politically correct these days. But, uh, but anyways, so, you know, I tattoo a lot of gypsies and a lot of stuff and uh, that that's like fortune teller type of imagery. And uh, my mom, she threw fortune cards. Uh, she learned, from a disabled person that their mom used to help out her and her sister and there's something pretty magical about the cards it's like they come out right I've even had to like stop asking fortune questions because I didn't want to know the future because it was like too real sometimes and it's definitely a, like a amazing thing to like witness and, and be around and she's uh she's got this connection that is uh something else and um, I'm actually working on a book right now with um, with Zach Scheinbaum, who's got the afterlife, and uh, we're gonna put out the first of uh, of a trilogy I'm doing. But this one's gonna be called Fortunes Told, and that's gonna be the next uh, flash book. 
Dude, that's so, awesome, man. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, and it's cool because it, it's got a lot to do with, you know, my family and where I come from. And, you know, being able to kind of share that with everyone, you know, in the community and then and also outside of it. People get these books and their coffee table books and then really get to enjoy it. So it's, it always makes my day when I see people, you know, getting to enjoy the books that I put out. Yeah, man, that's awesome. And it's, it, that's such a trip being the, the, the son of a fortune teller, man. I mean, yeah. that's, that, that's wild. You know, it's like, I've always wondered about that. And it's cool to know that, you know, obviously there's, you know, learning how to work the cards, but you always want to believe that there's a connection beyond that. And it's cool that you experience that. That's a trip, man. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's really cool. Yes. All our friends, you know, hit her up my cousin like okay I need, I need to know and and some will ask some serious questions where i'm like i don't i don't know if i want to know the answer to that question yeah well, would she lay out bad news if it was bad news you know well so there's this one card that scares me and it's the devil card you know and it doesn't always mean the worst thing depending on what it's surrounded by but as soon as you see that devil card you're just like fuck <laughs> shit is fucked up <laughs> and you know it's it's uh yeah it's one of those ones but yes she would you know i think certain situations you know maybe give it to you lightly but she's real about it yeah man that's awesome and did it feel i mean growing up in that environment you know between your dad and your mom did it kind of feel like your your future was predetermined in a way like artistically did you know you were going to be an artist is that what you wanted to be from from the get go um, I think I just really liked doing art. I had no idea. I like my skills were drawing and skateboarding and I knew I wasn't going to go pro because at that time it was, you know, there was young kids that were killing it at the age of, you know, 14 ripping. And I was already kind of past that point, you know, where I got a few tricks down, but I wasn't going to go pro, you know, <laughs> and uh, I loved art. I loved drawing. And that was really what got me into what I do now. I, I don't, you know, I think that they always supported it. They always hoped that I would be able to, to use it for something, but I, I, I would do art for myself and still do art for myself. And I think that's why I end up painting so much flash is because it's kind of like, the tattoos are for other people and the, the flash is more for me, which kind of goes hand in hand too. Cause it, it ends, people end up getting the designs and you know, then it, it all kind of comes full circle, but yeah, I don't know if it was, if it was predetermined. I think I just got really lucky and I got to be a, a working artist. The whole family's creative. My, my brother tattoos and he always, always in, into art and, and writing too. He's an amazing writer and artist. And it's cool to see him doing his own thing. He just moved out to the Netherlands and so I'm, I'm, I'm missing him big time, but uh, I'm super stoked for him. I mean, li living, living in the net, when you think about living in Europe as like a kid, you think about like studying abroad or you think about doing something like that. And it's, uh, and it's like, it's like kind of like a dream come true. So I'm getting to watch him how live his dream, you know? That's rad, man. Were you guys super tight growing up? Yeah, we were. And it's, we're nine years different uh and Damn. so yeah it's um same parents so older too. or younger yeah. i'm i'm uh nine years older uh well okay. eight and change so like eight and ten months but we you know it's about nine uh we, as soon as he was like old enough to like bring anywhere with me i would you know so i might not always been like the best influence but i was like <laughs> the fun i was the fun older brother and uh he came down to visit in san diego uh yeah san diego well, he, well, he called me and was like, I want to come down and on spring break and, and come visit. And I was just so happy that he wanted to come visit, you know, on his own, too. And so he, I was apprenticing at the time and he shows up and he's like, uh, I, I knew in my head, I was like, it's a bad idea to tattoo my 16 year old brother. So I wasn't going to do it. And then he was like, well, I, I kind of told all my friends I was like going to come down and get tattooed by my brother. I was like, ah, I'm not the kind of brother that's going to make my brother look bad. I was like, look, oh, so we did it. So we, I tattooed like a little skull and cross, but it's actually like a Viking skull with two crossed axes. But so he hid that from my parents for a while until, you know, my, I think my mom was helping him 
dress a wound and saw the inside of his arm is like what the <laughs> fuck so they're cool about it you know they're 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 awesome so you know they uh i think my dad he wanted to be the first one in the family to get tattooed so my mom didn't even tell him and then they came to visit and i was showing them pictures of my tattoos i had done and my dad's like oh that one's cool and uh we, we all laughed and that's when we're like oh okay eric you gotta tell dad you know t- tell him and he showed him and it was like he was like what the when the fuck did you get that <laughs> like well okay spring break that's great man i was gonna ask you did your parents have any tattoos growing up um no no they um they they didn't my i i tattooed my dad that was his first one that he got was from me i had tattooed awesome. like three months you know yeah i got he so he's got one like from like three months and then like after seven years and then maybe like uh, one that's like uh, after 11 years or something like that. So I think he's due, he's due for his next tattoo, I think. My, yeah, brother, yeah. my brother tattooed him too. Um, but he took me and the whole family, my brother and my mom to this, he had a motorcycle and it was a tattoo convention, Easy Riders. They, uh, they had like a show in Oakland and he took, he had a, he had a bike on display there and we went to go see it and took the whole family. And I really wanted a tattoo and I was 14 and he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and I was so pissed off because I couldn't get a tattoo. I'm glad I didn't get it because it was a dumb like fish bones tattoo. And like, it was just, it was just a, it was just a fish bone, not like the band or anything, it was just fish bones. And I, you know, I'm not even a fisherman. I, I, and I think fishing's is awesome but I, I enjoy it when I get to go, but I'm not, you know, I'm not passionate fisher or anything, so. It was a kind of a random tattoo to get, but <laughs> then I stick and poked myself with some friends, you know, like shortly after that. And yeah. Was that, was that, uh, was that bike convention kind of the, the wake up call for tattooing for you? Was it like the first time you really, you know, kind of got bit by the bug or, or what? It, it was, it was like, it was the first time I'd been around people with with tattoos i hadn't i hadn't seen that many people with tattoos before so it was really cool experience and i i just knew i liked it i didn't know what would happen in the future or anything but i just knew that i was into it awesome man when when did uh when did you know painting and drawing turn into tattooing for you when what, what year was that how old were you uh, like around 2004, okay. I, 2003, I, I had met, so my roommate, that no, was 2004, I'd met a new friend and we were just like this, like people used to call us the Corsican brothers. And we were, uh, we were just like this dynamic duo of trouble. And, <laughs> and, uh, he, he had this, he had this like crazy, like iridescent Cadillac that was chopped and we just drive that thing around Pacific beach. And it was just, uh, it was an awesome time to be, you know, living like that in our twenties, but I was also really broke and he was like, you should tattoo. And I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anyone in the industry. And he introduced me to his tattooer and we became friends and, uh, we were partying one night and eventually he was like, you, he said, well, I'll give you an apprenticeship. So uh, get your ass down to the shop tomorrow and, and do this. And then he didn't tell any of the other guys. So like I show up there, they're like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm Shawnee's apprentice. Uh, so I'm, here to, I'm here to mop the floor. <laughs> it's, it's good times so though. I'm a, so, so fortunate. And, and uh, I don't know. I was just got, I got really, really lucky. And both that, my friend Jeff actually is, he's the one that introduced me to, to both tattooers that I apprenticed under and, and worked for it at separate times and it was it, who, it, who it, it just fell into place so Ch- sean bus was the first person that um I, I i worked with and he was he was a great artist all the guys there uh i you know try and say hi and keep up with uh mikey slater who was there he's he was like a huge artistic influence on me in the beginning but, uh, but yeah, so Sean, Sean opened up Monster Tattoo and he used to work at Avalon in San Diego. A lot of people that worked at Avalon went on to do great things. You know, you got Guru Tattoo and Aaron Dolvadova and Bill Canales. They opened up Full Circle and 
all the, you know, FIP had a great crew of people. All these people went on to do amazing things. And so, yeah, I was started at Sean's. Um, there was some, there was some biker stuff that was happening in San Diego during that time. And so things got a little crazy and, uh, anyways, you know, can't talk about too much about that stuff, but yeah, it, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I ended up going to, uh, another friend's shop. Um, Sean moved and gave me permission to, to go and, and work for a friend, Seth and Seth Reynolds was the second person who he was a friend first too. And he, he helped me achieve, uh, my tattoo goals and was a great, he's, he's still a great friend. I just went to visit him. He's the proud owner of uh, Pure Platinum, San Diego now. It's, right on, uh, man. He's uh, he's still he's still he's still living. He's got he's got a few shops and, um, but yeah, working for those guys, I learned a lot. And uh, it, everyone that I worked with, I learned a lot from in those in those beginning stages. It was great. Now you're you know, incredibly gifted as an artist when you were learning to tattoo, you know, how did it come for you? Was it, did it come kind of smoothly? Was the transition somewhat, you know, uh, you know, easy or was there a learning curve? You know, did it take you a while to kind of really feel like, okay, like I'm picking this up. I'm in the swing of things now. Well, the first tattoos I did were all outlines and that's what Sean was like, work on outlines at first. And I had a lot of the artwork I had done before was uh, like pen on Bristol paper. So that's kind of what I could afford at the time it was like a, a marker and some, you know, sheets of paper. So I was familiar with lining things and it was really hard at first. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a trip when you have something vibrating in your hand and people watching you and you're all stressed yeah, out yeah, yeah. <laughs> pencils coming off and it's crazy, but uh, it, I, you know, once you kind of get past that, you know, initial fear of it, and you, you sack up and, and just and just do it 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 was the outlines kind of came more naturally it was more the shading I know this is different for other people I think everyone's a little different on their you know approach and what they pick up easier but I didn't know really where to shade most of my art was like outlines and I you know so it was it was just a kind of a crazy thing to to, to learn how to shade and uh, there's like a lot of graffiti art that I was I liked when I was younger and that shading is a little all over the place some of it's very cool and there's a light source and it makes sense and other stuff's like real crazy and wacky and so I I you know I started doing tattoo art when I started tattooing so I did all of it you know, where I you know tried to draw Japanese or tribal or traditional or all, all of it. I was just wanted to, to learn everything I could. Cause I saw everyone doing everything. It wasn't, it wasn't like it is now, but, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, I was more comfortable lining, which was weird. Now I now lining, you know, it's kind of like, you just want to get it over with so you can start the fun <laughs> part where you can start shading it. And that's where the design comes to life. Right on, man. When you were honing in your traditional style, uh, you, you know, who did you study? Obviously, this is the Sailor Jerry podcast. Uh, did you study any of Jerry stuff? Have you done any Jerry tattoos? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I've done Sailor Jerry tattoos. Uh, so Mikey Slater, he was the one that kind of turned me on to Sailor Jerry. I he had a he had the first book, the blue book. And I, I love the ships. You know, now I don't, you know, tattooing ships is, uh, you know, there's a lot of straight lines and it's, uh, you know, they're, <laughs> you know, they look awesome, but sometimes it's, a, it's, a, it's not the easiest tattoo to do all the time. But I really like the ships and I think he's one of the best artists that's, that's done them. I had that book. The, so I got the first Sailor Jerry book and I had a flash from the past. Um, both of those Ed Hardy put out and those were like my reference. And that's what I, you know, based everything off of for the beginning of it all. And then I, I met Theo Mendel when I moved back up. When I moved back home, I wanted to leave San Diego and come back. And my girl and I got a place up here and we're trying to start a new life. And uh, I got a job at Spider Murphy's. Not right away. It was like I worked on Hate Street for three weeks, but then I met Theo and I really liked the way that he approached traditional tattoos there was something that I couldn't explain it was like it's like mysterious looking 
And he did a lot of gypsy girls and fortune teller looking things. And I was attracted to that, you know, especially because of my mom. And so it, uh, he showed me a whole new plethora of, of work and then got to see, you know, I got to see Sailor Jerry stuff, but then I got to see like Zeiss stuff and I got to see, uh, Owen Jensen a lot and I got to see Dietzel and all these other people that I've been inspired by right on man that's super cool and then how long were you at Spider Murphy's I was there for 11 years damn so, yeah and, and prior to that I had kind of but I was reading articles and you know like Tattoo Artist Magazine and then magazines like that and it seemed like four years four or five years was this maximum that tattooers would stay in one place so I had that in my head but I was so happy there you know and, and it was such a great it was such a great experience to be a part of that when I was a part of that the you know the family that we had there and how much I learned it was it was incredible you know Theo was an amazing teacher to all of us and, and still is, you know, I, I see guys that are, you know, haven't been tattooing that long and they're, they're just starting at his shop and I can already see the influence that he has he's really good at explaining stuff. And he's always, he never ceases to amaze me. He's painted a bunch right now and it's super inspiring to see. And it's, uh, it was a really, really cool place to work at. Right on, man. And then did you uh, make the move to Blackheart from there? Yeah, so I I just I think I needed a change in life, and uh, I lived in San Francisco the whole time and commuted across the bridge, and was kind of thought maybe I should work in San Francisco. Being born in San Francisco, and living in San Francisco, and I I thought it'd be really cool to, well, you know, not only work at Blackheart is like the like a, a whole dream come true, and I read in a in an article that it was a tattoo artist magazine that Juan was in. And he said, not everyone can work at Blackheart. So, <laughs> so getting a job at Blackheart, it's a, it's a dream come true. I really looked up to everyone there. I still look up to everyone there. It's, it's, uh, they're so inspiring. They can draw so well. And I think there's less of that in tattooing now where and that's fine you know everyone gets their designs a certain way but to see people like work on drawings and be passionate about the art that they put into the tattoo prior to applying the tattoo is really incredible i don't think there's enough of that anymore but you know there's so much digital and ipad and stuff like that which is great and i i, I think that tools are you know push us forward and all that stuff and it's stupid to be ignorant to think that they're helpful but to see someone just whip out an amazing drawing on paper uh, yeah you're right in front of you it's it's uh it's it's different than someone whipping out an ipad <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah man i i don't i it's hard for me to get in like i i get i of course respect the you know the the digital artistry, but the iPad and the, like the eye pencil and that whole thing, it just kind of bums me out, man. I mean, I'm just not really, I'm just not really into it. And I don't, I don't like the way it looks either. Like Finn, you can always kind of tell when something's been done digitally. It just kind of, it just feels weird. You can, uh, you can definitely tell. I think that's, that's one of the things, um, but I think it, to, to try and make it not look so digital and stiff is, is a big challenge. It's uh, it's actually something I'm, I I bought an iPad recently uh, to so I'm not like left in the dust. <laughs> like I was like the last person at Spider Murphy's to have an iPhone or Instagram, and I was like, ah! I walked into an Apple store and was like, I need Instagram, and they're like, what? They're like, it's an app. You just download it. I was like, I don't have a smartphone. They're like, oh, well, you need a smartphone. And I, was, I was like, well, yeah. So sell me a phone that I can get on Instagram. And so, you know, so I, with this, with this iPad thing, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to learn how to use it. I got some, I got some ideas. I'm actually working on a project with a good buddy of mine, uh, Danny Derrick. We're working on something pretty exciting. So it's going to come out hopefully this year and uh, it's going to 
it's going to be some some pretty some pretty cool stuff that I think a lot of people will will enjoy. I do, however, think that like painting Flash is on an iPad is kind of lame. I think that people do a pretty For cool sure. job, but it looks like uh, like like colored pencil kind of thing, and yeah. you kind of maybe can't tell a little bit. But the the whole spit shading thing on an iPad is kind of kind of silly, you know. Yeah, and it's just there's there's so many ways that you can like, you know, I mean it's it's awesome as a tool because like it it'll correct things and you can like depending on what setting you have it on it'll it'll do a lot of work for you, but it's kind of like, you know, like if you're if you're creating or if you're looking to like buy something, uh, you know, from an artist and it's it's drawn digitally, it just I don't know, I just I, I'm not I'm not really a fan. I'm a huge fan of just handmade stuff. Yeah, uh, I really like like holding a piece of flash in my hand that I painted on like a watercolor board and it's it's there's something a lot different about it and yeah. then you know when people get to you know photocopy that and make a tattoo design out of it or something it's 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 a different it's a different thing but I don't know it's that's also you know there's times are changing like people are making millions off of nfts and all that kind of stuff <laughs> and I think it's time for artists to come up and people just use artists all the time for stuff and, and i think that it's it's a good time for people now to like be able to 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 make money as an artist and get and get paid properly so they don't have to struggle in life so they can you know they're not just scraping by i got yeah, man uh, i got to do this uh i did a Fillmore poster and back in the day it's like i have this book my dad gave me is Fillmore posters, uh, all the old handbills from you know 60s, 70s, and it's got all these amazing people in it. You know, and it's got all these amazing bands. There's like Hendrix posters, Doors posters, like you name it. You know, Rick Griffin drawings and Greg Irons drawings, and it's it's the shit. And so getting an opportunity to do a poster for the Fillmore was awesome, except that Live Nation owns you know the mm. Fillmore now and it's a corporate and, and whatever you know but it I did the poster for four hundred dollars and it took him fucking eight months to pay me <laughs> and I was like if I didn't tattoo and have another source of income like well how the fuck do you live off of that you know so, yeah yeah man for sure yeah that uh that that corporate uh pay structure is it's it's slower than molasses man that <laughs> yeah, we're, i gotta send an invoice to texas i thought i was just gonna walk down to the fillmore hand them the poster i painted and get get cash you know and uh that's that's not how it works <laughs> not oh, no anymore. it's it's gotta be approved by you know six different levels before it gets to payroll and then payroll's yeah. gotta double check everything yeah, man, that's a fucking that's a fucking nightmare. But that's cool. You got to do the poster, man. That's fucking dope. Yeah, actually, uh, dude, it's in my living room. If you want to see it, I'll yeah, yeah, let's check it. Let's check it. Let me see. I'm gonna show you. So this is this is for Calexico. Oh see it? hell yeah! yeah and it's a uh, it's a New Year's poster. So I did all the lettering and this little church is uh, from Tucson. And uh, so Calexico is from Tucson. And uh, I I don't know much about the band, but. My girls, uh, she grew up in Tucson, and so she showed me the church, and it was kind of a fun thing for us because she's uh, she she was stoked on it, so it made me more stoked on it, you know. Yeah, man, that's <laughs> dope. Calexico's an awesome band too. They're a great band. That's a cool poster, dude. Oh, uh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, it was cool. so a lot of people were like, "Oh, you like you should, you know." Now, now I know, now I know the band, you know. So it's uh, it was it was cool to be introduced to it doing that, you know. And yeah, so, man. Right on. And you're, you know, you are a flash making motherfucker, man. You're like the flash God. How many, <laughs> how many, uh, how many books you got out? I'm trying to keep up with Sailor Jerry, right? He's got three books. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm working on this new trilogy. Uh, so we, we did the, the first books were the spider Murphy's one. So there was two of those. And then okay. after that, I did one called continuing a tradition and that one, was 50 pages of of new flash and some of it was you know uh inspired by old flash and some of his new ideas and and then um the next one was paradise that was a book put out by LLL books um Zach Nelligan's company and it's a 
eight and a half. Well, no, it's uh, like a small guy, like five by seven, but it's one design each page. So I did that one. And then uh, my traditional vision was put out by Mickey and Tattoo Life. And they did, they did the Spider Murphy's books. And Mickey's been a really great person. And, and Mike, you know, he's been a great friend and a really cool uh, advocate of, of my art. And so that book was a collection of probably the last decade. So there's stuff in that book that is from all of the books. And then there's some new stuff too. So I painted new th some new things for that and a whole compilation of all the other stuff too that I enjoyed from the last decade. That's awesome, man. Is that something that you, uh, that you really care about? You know, because it's like, it, it's like immortalizing your art in a way. It's really making your mark in the history of tattooing, uh, you know, with, with these books and, and, and with these flash sheets. Is that something that means a lot to you? You know, because obviously... Uh, you know, tattooing means a lot to you and you, you, you tattoos are forever, but there's something about the history and the tradition of these books um, that is like, it's like folklore, you know what I mean? I mean, they're just like things that you treasure, you know? So does it feel really cool to be a part of that? Yeah, it, it's, it, it's incredible to have a book that somebody else enjoys. Yeah. I, when I first saw tattoo books, I thought it's the coolest thing in the world to be invited into doing this this book, and when when I got the opportunity to be in a book, it was it was that much more special. So the the paintings, uh, it's it's what I love to do in my free time. I love painting flash. I love that people enjoy the designs, and it it helps me want the want to create more. Uh, that that people enjoy it and I because I do it for myself it, it's kind of what you know keeps me out of trouble it's I love doing it it's something I can en enjoy doing it's completely sober and it's just something that's it's like a it's, it's a special part of my life so the fact that other people get it tattooed on them and enjoy it and kind of get to see these little you know little pictures of my life and history that they that they want for themselves is, is a real special thing yeah, man, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's really, really fucking cool. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about Speed California. Let's talk about Speed Company. Speed. Yeah, yeah, because that's yeah. that's Speed. that's fucking awesome, man. I uh, I think it's really, really cool what you're doing, um, and I want to talk to you about it because it's basically uh, did it start as motorcycle gloves? So I I wanted to do a company again. I had before I started tattooing, we had this company called Illegal Productions. And it was like skateboard stuff. And I, a friend from high school and I worked on it. He, he kind of had the, the name and the company started and we joined together and, and made this thing. And it was a lot of fun. We had a great time in San Diego doing it. And it was before like major online sales were happening or anything like that. And, you know, so we, we didn't really make any money and, uh, but, but it was a lot of fun. And now, you know, kind of in this day and age you see the power of of advertising through social media and stuff like that and so I think it's an easier time you know or was maybe not right at this moment but it was an easier time before to you know be able to create a company out of thin air and you have big cartel or Etsy or something like that where you can have these little stores for a, a solo person and you can be a small business so I've been thinking about it for a while and my I kept on I always share my ideas with with my girl Sarah and she's always like you know she'll, she'll always you know she's so supportive and and awesome so uh I was like well maybe we could do something together you know and and so we I had this idea I wanted to do, this, do something a little bit more than just like t-shirts sweatshirt hat designs stuff like that and so I I had this idea about motorcycle gloves and that's what started it and that was a really difficult thing to get in the first place we got the first manufacturer i thought there was you know there's like three manufacturers in the united states for leather gloves everything else is made overseas i walked into a store in san francisco and i asked them if they had anything made in america and they didn't have a single glove made in america so that's what kind of started getting me going on this made in america thing and we i i I had gotten a motorcycle accident, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, and my hands were totally saved by my gloves. 
my hands have been completely ripped apart and I've ripped apart my hands skateboarding plenty of times to just, it's like the worst. Yeah. You know, it's, it takes forever to heal. It just sucks. Right. And also like on the motorcycle, you're going faster so you can lose fingers and hands, you know, whatever. So it's, it's way more, it's you know, way smarter to, to have a glove on your hand while you're riding a motorcycle than to not. So that was a whole other thing. And I was like, I realized how many of my friends don't wear gloves riding motorcycles after starting the company. I was like, why don't you wear gloves? <laughs> <laughs> like it's, you know, it's, it's brutal. If you ever fall and you don't have a pair of gloves on your motorcycle, you're, you know, you're going to lose some skin for sure. So that was kind of my personal experience. And, and then wanting to, to do something that was a little bit different than just t-shirts or, you know, your classic thing that you would screen print on. And I, I grew up around motorcycles and helped my dad paint them. And I've been riding for a long time. My brother and I ride to work almost every day for a long time. And so it was a special, special part of life. And I wanted to kind of, kind of, kind of wanted to share that. It's a, yeah. know, it's a passion, passion project. It's, you know, no one's getting rich over here, but it's, it's, it's fun. And, and people seem to, to be responding well and like the, like the art. And there's so much you tattoo biker kind of stuff that go hand in hand and it's it's fun that's dope man and i really uh i really dig that you took the time to you know source it uh here in the united states because um that's something that you see a lot of companies now um you know coming back to which i think is really really amazing and important um and it's it's something that as someone who uh knows a fair share about you know, merch and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's something that it's real easy to just, you know, outsource it, get it from overseas and, and get it for cheaper and not necessarily have to do, uh, you know, a little bit of the extra leg work or, you know, quality control, things like that. But like you're saying, if it really means something to you, it means a lot to you. And the, the quality of the product means a lot to you. So I'm super stoked that you're getting it made here. What was the process like of like, you know, like, did you design the glove? Did you have someone design it for you? Did you kind of like, did you have, was there, was there like, you know, some, uh, some early versions of it or anything like that? Yeah, totally. We, I drew some designs uh, based off of gloves that I liked, that I wore, that were successful by as far as riding with, where certain parts hurt your finger if it's in a weird area or certain stitchings don't make sense. And they're like, why would you have that there? It rubs on your thumb the whole time you're riding and, you know, you're, thumbs rods the you know the opposite effect of like why you would want a glove so we i drew some designs i sent them to a guy first i called a company and i was like oh do you do you do it says you do manufacturing in america and they're like well our glove guy he'll uh he'll work with you if he wants to you gotta send him a message and then so he, i had to send him a message on facebook and then he got back to me it was like okay we can do it and then I sent him all the stuff and he's like, well, we can only do it this way. And so I was back and forth. And, and then that, that guy couldn't deliver. He took all of the, uh, he took all of the money and then didn't deliver the product <laughs> on time. And so uh, I think he was really, really busy and I got the money back. Uh, luckily we paid with a credit card. And so I rolled to dispute it. And since we didn't have anything that was delivered, then we got, we got the money back. But then we had this crazy credit card you know like credit <laughs> you know, like, so we use it to buy other like you know merch but gloves are expensive so i found uh, a really really great guy in uh bend oregon awesome and he was communicative right from the start so i guess if i was going to give anyone advice if communication is bad from the beginning do not do business and that seems so obvious but this guy jake he he really was the the best he he understood what i was trying to do he was so fast with the turnaround time for the designs on the gloves and and made it happen and we were like crunch time we had a we wanted to launch the company a certain time we kept on pushing it back because the other manufacturer and then jake delivered and and made our made our company happen and so you know it's you can't do like as as many crazy things with a glove made in America because it's got it's made here so it's it's got to be a little bit more simplified and there's a lot of stuff that people can do when they're you know getting real cheap labor and you know some of those gloves 
you know, fall apart because they're not sewn together as good. The quality's not there, but they might have more bells and whistles and, and, and basically bullshit. Like you just need a leather glove to go over your hand in case you fall. It's, it's not, it's not too, you know, there's a lot of, unless you're racing or something, you might want a little more protection, but for the most part, you have layers of skin on your glove that are just going to save your hand. So the sim simpler, the better for me anyways, as far as like the style goes. As, as yeah, for yeah. That's awesome, man. And I think it's, uh, it's really cool what you're doing. And I, you know, for people out there listening, you go to speedcalifornia.com, right? Is that the, yes. uh, that's the site? Yeah. yeah you can go to speedcalifornia.com. You got the gloves up there. You got flash up there, of course. Yeah. You know, of course there's some flash. You got some other stuff on there you can check out. And uh, it's cool, man, because I, I think, uh, especially for independent artists, uh, you know, people that are just trying to get, you know, little, you know, businesses off the ground and things like that. I think the more that you can, you know, keep that stuff in the States, it's so rad just because like you're saying, we might not have all the production bells and whistles yet that you can, you know, get doing stuff overseas. But, you know, the way that that changes is by, you know, people really trying to make stuff here in the States. And I'm, I'm a big believer in that, man. I think it's really, really cool. Yeah, no, it, it is. That's awesome that you feel that way because it, it is cool. I used to be, I was like, why can't you just go into a store and, you know, like, I just say even like a pin, right? We all get pins. We all love punk rockers love pins. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> you're like, how cool would it be to go into a place and they show you all of the pins that you can, the styles you can choose from and you work it out with the person that's going to make it for you. And then boom, you come back in a few weeks when your order's ready. And it's like, now it's like, you have to do all of the work yourself. You send it to like a, a middleman, unless you have a, a you know, a, chi a China contact. And, and then you're, you know, so the middleman could be good because maybe there's not, not a language barrier or something like that, but then you get, you get charged twice as much, if not more. And then, you know, it's like, it's, there's no, uh, there's no relationship in, in anymore. It's like, uh, yeah. it's, it's, and I think that's why getting stuff made here is really great. I mean, there's great things made all over the world, but it's, I think getting something local, you know, and it's, it's, it's like, it's like a local grocery store compared to Whole Foods, you know, it's, it's like, why, why support a corporation when you can go support someone that, you know, it's right down the street that you see walking their dog every day or, or whatever, you know, it's like part of the community. And I think getting stuff made in America builds more community here and we're less reliant and it's more expensive. But if, if people are just a little bit less greedy, you know, it, it'd be cool. Yeah, man, absolutely. Couldn't agree more, man. Couldn't agree more. So uh, I don't want to take too much more of your time up here, Paul. I definitely appreciate you, my man. Uh, but I did want to talk to you about uh, a couple random things. One, the first being travel, you know, you're a native Californian, uh, but most tattoo artists that I know have at some point done, whether it's through conventions or just, you know, artistically roaming, uh, they've done some sort of traveling in their life. So, uh, do you fuck with the rest of the world outside of California? Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, as much as possible, you know? So yeah, I love it. Uh, getting to go to conventions in other countries I couldn't really afford anything before I started tattooing so it was you know I didn't get to backpack around Europe as a kid or you know, we, we had you know, some really cool family vacations and things like that growing up uh, but it, I didn't you know I didn't get to I think it's like Europe's expensive I went once when I was like 22 my grandfather had left me some bonds and I cashed them in it was like 700 bucks and I went to uh, London and Amsterdam and ran out of money immediately. It was like, <laughs> it was like $700 doesn't get you anywhere. And that was in like 2002 also. So n now being able to go and tattoo in another country and be able to kind of support your trip through that is, is like a dream come true. And, and getting to do conventions, uh, you know, internationally, you know, renowned, conventions like it's you know london and in italy and paris and it's just like you know we were we were i was joking with um valerie and stewart from modern classic in, in london and and we were i forget where i think we were at the bay area tattoo convention and so i was saying goodbye to them and i was like okay well when do i see you next and we're like okay paris 
I was like, okay, we'll have dinner in Paris. And someone's like listening and they're like, what the fuck? Kind of, you know, like, oh, I'll just have dinner in Paris with you guys next time I see you. But I was like, but that, that was like a reality. And we get to, we get to do that kind of thing. So I've made a bunch of great friends. Um, like H Henning is one of the, my favorite people from, you know, he's from Denmark and my dad's Danish. And it's uh, getting to go out to Denmark and, and tattoo out there. And, and he's such an inspiring person to be around. But there's so many people like that. I have so many friends in so many places now. And during COVID was, was weird because we don't get to see, I, I'm like, I haven't seen some of these friends in a couple of years. So now that things are kind of opening up again and for as far as like a international convention goes and I'm actually doing my first convention in a couple of years, the West Texas convention that's coming up and I'm pretty excited. So I'm going to get to see some friends I haven't seen in a long time Hell and yeah. I'm, I'm excited to go, you know, I want to go to, to Europe to go see my brother again, but I was going to, to Europe three times a year sometimes. Damn. And then I would try and I would try and do uh, my girl and I always try and do one trip where I don't have to work and we just go and have fun. And so we've, we've gotten to do a bunch of incredible trips, like one of our favorite places. And what kind of inspired the Paradise book was going to Tahiti. We went to Morea, Bora Bora and Tahiti and just had a blast. And that kind of stuff is is uh, is one of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite things to do in life is 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 travel and so getting to do it because you can tattoo in another country or getting to do it you know you like get to you know travel around the world and, and make art it's 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 really a dream come true it's it's hard too you know it's not like it's all like so glamorous sometimes you just see the inside of a hotel room in a convention center for a few days and and you got to like get through it to be able to go from there to to a paradise type of place or just even have a day off afterwards and get to roam around a city you've never been to before it's 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 awesome yeah man it really is the fucking best it's one of the things that i i missed most about the last couple of years of you know not being able to tour and and you're absolutely right about um you know the, how the world opens up when you it's such a cool feeling to have friends you know across the world you know you realize how big the world is and how many amazing people there are in it you know doing really cool shit traveling it changes your whole perspective on life, I think. Um, and it's really, really something that changed, you know, my perspective and my life. You know, it was always a, 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 an extreme blessing getting to travel, man. And it's something that yeah. I, miss, I miss it so much. I can't wait. I'm hoping we're going to get back out uh, overseas at some point this year. We're going to Australia in April, hopefully. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you been to Australia before? Yeah, man. Yeah, we, we do pretty good over there. So it's been like cool. a... It's a trap. You been? Yeah, I went. Yeah. I went one time. It's a blast yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a it. fucking trip. It's it's. It reminds me a lot of like uh, what I would you know what like California like you know kind of like older California you know because it's all kind of coastline but people are are super relaxed and you yeah. know I mean they got their issues but it, it's Australia is fucking awesome man I love it yeah I I love it out there and that's so cool I mean like you you have the best job. You get to go play music <laughs> in front of thousands of people. And, and it's just like, I mean, I think that is, is such an incredible thing. And all of, all of my friends and bands and things like that, it, it's, it's to, to hear their stories of their travels and their shows. And it's amazing. That Rockstar Life is killer. You know, you, oh, guys, you, you, know. Guys, you guys do it up. And I know it's hard, you know, and that's hard. But it's also like, you know, everyone aspires to be that thing, right? You know, you're like, get to get to be that. It's a, it's a, For it's sure. A I got a lot of respect for, for all my musician friends. Oh, my man. Thank you very much. Speaking of, uh, speaking of music, what, uh, you know, in the shop, let's take Blackheart, for example. I'm always curious about what's, you know, what's pumping through the speakers uh, in the shop. Is it something that everybody has to mutually agree on? Or are there, is there like, what kind of music do you like to listen to when you're tattooing? Do you not listen to music when you're tattooing? Oh, no, I music's a must for most things but that at black card they do it cool it's like everyone gets 45 minutes and then it's like <laughs> rotate and then some people I love it some people yell about it like ah oh, fuck you know whatever some you know i i try not to put on music that bums people out you know i i think i put on the beatles one time and scott was like what the fuck you know I was like all right well i'll listen to that on my own time then you know or whatever but it's uh yeah i 
I have some of my go-tos. Uh, if I'm feeling a little tired or something, I'll, I love I love the Dead Boys because the Sonic Reducer right from the beginning is just like, okay, like I'm gonna fucking do this. And yeah. so I also don't want to like I probably burn everybody out on it already, you know. <laughs> I've only, I've only <laughs> like, been there a couple of years, right. you know. Probably like I don't think anyone needs to hear fucking. The young loud and snotty ever again from from uh, me, you know. I've I've probably heard Sonic Reducer at least a hundred thousand times in my life. From well, you know, from fucking bars and, yeah. and everywhere you go to. But hey, there's a reason why the classics are classic. I mean, that yeah. tune is that tune is all time, you know, it's fucking great. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Right on, man. I want to ask you a couple just uh, you know, quick questions here. Um, would you rather a client be super talkative or not say a word? Um, I, it, it doesn't matter so much to me. I, I think that it's, uh, I, I like it when people talk. Uh, I don't have to talk to. There's sometimes <laughs> where, I mean, I, I was like using this stencil stuff and it was like some some new stuff and it was like completely falling off the stencil was completely falling off and someone's trying to talk to me a bunch and i was just not talking because i was stressed out about the thing fucking staying on and <laughs> uh and it was like you know so sometimes it's 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 hard i feel talking to somebody trying to tell them a story when i'm tattooing them i i feel all I talk so like I'm like 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 you know I'm kind of like God I can't even get the story out I'm like you know <laughs> so some, sometimes silence is nice and sometimes you know having someone talk a bunch is cool too it just depends you know some people are are more entertaining and and you know I vibe with easier and and that's it when it's natural it's great when it feels forced you know there's been some people I tattooed some you know weird you know jocks before and i'm like so like uh i don't know you like sports or strip clubs or you know like what I'm like, I'm like, i was like what kind of common ground can we like talk about here you know it's like but uh when it when it's natural it's it's uh it's when it's the best yeah 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 just like all things in life uh what do you uh what do you love about tattooing fuck i love traveling and i love painting tattoo flash uh yeah. i love making friends in, all over the world and i love you know doing art for a living those are awesome. those are the best awesome what do you hate about tattooing oh <laughs> 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 well my body's falling apart a little bit <laughs> and uh i've been like feeling like every time a customer is suffering i could like i'm like absorbing it into me and I'm breaking down, <laughs> but uh, no, there's, there's, there's not, no real complaints. I think the standard ones, you know, I, I'm really lucky with uh, my customers are so great. They, they don't give me too many issues ever. And I hear a lot of horror stories and, you know, I, 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 I get really lucky when I don't, people aren't too picky and they just, they come and get, you know, fun stuff. And, so I think a lot of a lot of people's complaints I hear, you know, some from annoying customers or something like that. And so it's like they're they're the reason that we're all in business. And I think that it's important to have a good relationship with them. So I and I'm I'm really fortunate to have great customers. So I I don't have a whole lot of hate in my tattooing these days, you know. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Uh party tats or prison tats. Uh definitely party <laughs> tats. <laughs> I've never been to prison. I've been to jail for a few days, but I have not been to prison. So I guess I would know, you know, but I've covered some prison tats and I've seen some really, really incredible prison tats, but definitely party tats. I got all kinds of rad party tats. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple too, man. They're fucking hilarious. Absolutely like, amazing. Favorite <laughs> tattoos are from tattooers. Yeah, it's like I got I got all kinds of good ones that are just the best memory and it's and it's fun to laugh. And it when you're like, you know, do stuff like we do, it doesn't really matter if all your tattoos are winners, you know. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. All right. So now we are in the digital age here. Smartphone, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, would you rather have friends or followers? Oh my god, friends. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how people answer that sometimes. Oh my god! I am the kind of person I would put us back in the Stone Age if it was up to me. I would be like, I don't, I, you know, I mean, there's a lot of like, look, we're having this conversation and it's been super fun and that's awesome that you know hanging out with you. And so we couldn't do that without what we're talking about now. But I would probably prefer to just hang out with you at you know Zeitgeist next to Blackheart and we could have a beer or you know we could have tequila or whatever you enjoy you know we could we could be hanging out and having a good time but you know it's it's uh so these these opportunities are cool when you get to hang out with someone online or you know get to do a podcast it's amazing but it's also you know fuck the internet it's 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 a fucking nightmare and having to keep up with all this shit it's like I feel obligated because I have a business as a working artist you know, the people like I see online sometimes and they're like, you know, they say different shit about what and whatever. And it's like, fuck it. Everyone, the more amount of, of social media stuff that you have at your fingertips, the more that you can accomplish some of the things you might want to, as far as your, your life goes, like, you know, how can you sell art if no one sees it? You know, yeah. it's, it's a, so it, it's a, you have to just use that shit as, as you feel, see, as you see fit, I guess, you know? Yep, absolutely, man. All right, a couple more here. Heroes or villains? Uh, heroes. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, do you believe in aliens? Uh, I think that it'd be ridiculous to think that we're the only species that is this way. I think there's a whole universe out there of possibilities, but I, I would like to see it to believe it for sure. Okay. All right. Do you think Oswald shot JFK? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. We, I, mean, I don't even like, I don't even really go far deep into that stuff, but yeah, I don't think he did. <laughs> All right. Fair enough, man. Uh, what is the, what's the rest of the year looking like for you? What are your plans? Oh man. Uh, well, my girl and I are trying to start a family and uh, that's a, that's a pretty crazy thing, you know? So, uh, there's that we're, we're, uh, we're, you know, super stoked on, uh, I didn't, I didn't want a kid for 41 years <laughs> and, uh, something just happened. And I, I think that, you know, now's, now's a good time, you know, even though, even though like it's, it seems a little crazy given the, you know, this time in life, but besides that, uh, I have a ton of, projects i'm working on a really cool project with danny derrick and we uh more to come on that i can't talk a whole bunch about it but um there's uh there's a i'm doing the trilogy with with zach and his afterlife press company so i'm gonna put out i'm gonna paint that book this year and probably come out next year uh, i did a bunch of paintings for some upcoming projects there's the bold will hold books coming out and tough love books coming out and so uh there's just a constant flow of that some commissions but these these big projects are uh are with danny and uh and this this trilogy with zach so i'm ex i'm super excited about those things right on man that's great well paul it's been awesome talking to you man it's, it's been really you, great talking uh, to you matt yeah, man. Thanks for being a guest on the Sailor Jerry podcast. We got speedcalifornia.com. Is uh what do you got? Paul Doubleman.com. Is that one too? Yeah, and Blackheart too. And Blackheart. Okay, awesome. So yeah, people Black, can track Blackheart you down there. SF.com. All right, but, right uh, on, man. But hey, it was great talking and hanging out. Uh I hope to see you soon in the future in person. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. I I, I got a I got a trip coming up to uh to San Francisco at some point. So whenever I, I get my ass up north, I'll I'll hit you up. Yeah, hit me up. You got my cell phone. Don't be a stranger, all right? All right, brother. Thank you. All right. Peace. Later. Oh, yeah. If you can hear the sound of my voice, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that means we have come to the end of episode 30 of the Sailor Jerry podcast. Huge shout out to Paul Dobelman. Thank you very much, Paul, uh, for the awesome conversation. Uh, you're an incredible artist awesome dude and i really enjoyed talking with you man so thank you very much uh you can follow paul at paul doberman at speed california uh you know at black heart tattoo uh he's all over the internet uh so just google and uh and support where you can you know what i'm saying uh really cool that speed california uh makes everything here in the u.s i thought that was awesome so shout out to speed california 
You can follow me at 213 Matman, of course, at Sailor Jerry. Don't forget that Sailor Jerry Spiced Rum is made the old school way. 92 proof, bold and smooth as hell. I'll see you guys in two weeks. Peace.